Galera, acabou os exclusivos do Xbox. Hoje a gente teve uma live com o Phil Spencer, que é o grande chefão da Xbox. Nós vamos fazer um react aqui, conversar um pouco com vocês. A live, inclusive, ela está é, no canal da Xbox e a gente vai poder mostrar para vocês aqui ela legendada, o que é ótimo para vocês poderem assistir. Não esquece, se inscreve no canal, ativa o sininho para você receber todas as notificações e para você ficar por dentro de tudo, meus queridos e minhas queridas. Vamos ver aqui esse vídeo juntos para a gente não perder absolutamente nada. Vamos ver juntos aí. Olha lá a apresentação do update on Xbox Business. Hello and welcome to the official Xbox podcast. I'm your host Tina Amini and we have a very special episode Satina today as you can probably tell by the fact that I'm joined by Phil, Sarah and Matt. Welcome. And we're going to talk about imprensa, some updates at também. Xbox. We want to talk about game exclusivity. We want to talk about Activision Blizzard now that they're part of our portfolio, how that might be an impact on Game Pass. And we want to talk about hardware too and how all of this fits into the strategy at sure. Xbox. So where should we start, Phil? Well, when we originally had planned for the mm -hmm. show, starting what, back in December, um, I think we probably would have started with Activision Blizzard maybe talked a little bit about the exclusivity with some of the news coming up and then hardware. But we've, we've had some unforeseen news that has come out. So let's just go and, and tackle the exclusivity question because I know it's on the minds of a lot of people. We hear from the community and that's an important input for... Só para dar contexto para a galera, teve uma lorota sobre Starfield sair para PlayStation, que não rolou, mas aparentemente três títulos da Xbox vão sair da exclusividade. Vamos ver juntos. Russ. So we made the decision that we're going to take four games to the other consoles, um, just four games, not a change to our kind of fundamental exclusive strategy. Uh, it is we're making these decisions for some specific reasons. Um, we make every decision really with the long term health of Xbox in mind. Um, and long term health of Xbox means a growing platform, our games performing, building the best platform for creators. Um, reaching as many players as we can. We're always looking to learn as a leadership team um, and to grow. And we think this is an interesting point in time for us to use what some of the other platforms have right now um, to help grow our franchises. So we're going to do that. So these four titles, what are they? Can they? Can you say? I'm not going to name those games. The teams that are building those games have announced plans that are not too far away. As we know, game teams put a lot of energy into their announcements with the partners. So um, I don't want to take anything away from those teams. Um, so I won't be talking about the titles specifically, but I, I think when they come out, um, it'll make sense. Can we say if either of those titles are Starfield or Indiana Jones? They are not Starfield or Indiana Jones. No well, way. What was the Disney criteria the in how the team was thinking about selecting those four titles? Let me start a little bit outside of that, and then I'll get to the four specific games that we're talking about right now. Because the, the fundamental decision driver for any decision that we make, anything we're going to talk about today, is the long-term health of Xbox that we're running a growing platform that is reaching more players, that our games are having as much success as possible. And I do have a fundamental belief that over the next five or 10 years, exclusive games, games that are exclusive to one piece of hardware are gonna be a smaller and smaller part of the game industry. And that's not some great insight, because if you look at the last 10 years and what the biggest games are today, it's a natural place whether it's one console and PC, multiple consoles, mobile console and PC, you see big games landing on multiple body, platforms. Gente. And we want to be a great platform for creators that are trying to realize that potential. But now back to the specifics of the question on these four, four specific titles. We looked at games that are over a year old. So they've been on Xbox and PC for a while. Uh, a couple of the games are community-driven games, new games that kind of first iterations of a franchise that have reached their full potential, I'd say, on Xbox and PC. There's always growth. Franchises that we obviously want to continue to invest in. Parting, part of having the ability to continue to invest is that the businesses behind those franchises continue. Um, we think it's important that these service-based games that have communities behind them, that they can have confidence that they're going to exist in the future. So two of them kind of community-driven games that will end up on other platforms and give us the ability to continue to invest in them. We think that's great for the business and great for the communities, more players to play with. I'd say two of the other games are smaller games that 
were never really meant to be built as kind of platform exclusives and all the fanfare that goes around that. But games that our teams really wanted to go build, that we love supporting creative endeavors across our studios, regardless of size. And as they've realized their full potential on Xbox and PC, we see an opportunity to utilize the other platforms as a place to just drive more business value out of those games, allowing us to invest in maybe future iterations of those, so sequels to those, or just other games like that in our portfolio. And when we don't damage Xbox and we can grow our business using what other platforms have and to, to help us with that, we're gonna do that. And, and that's really the story behind these four games. And uh, last thing I'll say, looking forward, you know, I, I think there are there is an interesting story for us of introducing Xbox franchises to players on other platforms to get them more interested in Xbox. We think there's a, a good brand value for Xbox there. So four games, no promise beyond that. So if you're on those other platforms and you see these four games coming, please don't take it as some signal that everything's coming. It's not. Um, and we're going to learn. So when you are thinking about the future and this concept of live service games, games that can benefit from bigger audiences, new audiences, how does that apply to future titles and how you're applying that criteria there? Yeah, there's really no fundamental change to how we think about exclusivity. We just came out of Developer Direct, which was an awesome show, um, where we showed great games that are coming to Xbox and PC and cloud, which really makes them accessible to you know hundreds of millions of people. So it's this kind of, we're really focused on a couple platforms and what's going to show up there. Um, but our, our key of play the games you want with the people you want, anywhere you want, when anybody play, when everybody plays, we all win. These have been part of our strategy for years and will continue to be. Our focus is on how do we continue to grow the games industry by reaching more players in more places, and how do we grow Xbox as part of that? Xbox is a hardware platform, Xbox is a publisher of great games, and Xbox as a platform for the world's best creators. Esse é o Phil Spencer, gente, o chefão da Xbox. E aí também teve aí a, a, pessoa, a nova presidenta da Xbox também falando um pouco sobre as gaming communities. Vamos ver o que, que eles falaram aqui nesse trecho da entrevista, que acho que é interessante também. Those games bigger. And we think about that across all of the investments we make, the consoles we build, the investments we do with things like crossplay, cross progression, the things that we're doing with cloud. How do we actually give more options to game creators so they can have the greatest success? I think one of the, the fun recent examples about this is actually Power World. You know, Power yeah. World was able to Power launch, World they were a game alive. preview, they launched in Game Pass, they also simultaneously launched in Steam. And through the combination of those things, you know, Pocket Pair was able to have this outsized success, Amazing. and it was the largest third-party Game Pass launch ever. And that's all because we give creators options on how they can launch their games. We've got subscription, we've got retail, we've got free-to-play, we've got game preview, we have the console. A resposta de, da Microsoft para quem gosta de exclusivos é Pound World. We have our experience on PC and they can access all of those things. And when we step back and we just look at the performance of our platform all up, we know it's working. We're at the highest level of users on console, the highest level of users on PC, the highest level of users on cloud ever. We have double digit growth rate on PC and cloud, places where we're enabling creators to actually reach new players beyond the console ecosystem. And that's why we're leaning into it and doing more because we see all those signals. So we're talking about the role that hardware plays for creators, for the mm -hmm. games and those communities. What about the role that hardware plays for us as a business, for Xbox? When we look at our hardware, it really is, and Phil said this every, earlier, it's where you get like the most flagship seminal experience of Xbox. And it also represents a developer target. Our developers can build the specs of our hardware, and we invest to make sure they know when they do that, that the games are going to grow great on our hardware, but they're also going to be a able to be accessed across any stream, any screen because of all the other investments we make. So we're giving them an easy way to access as many players as possible. And we actually have more creators right now building for Xbox than ever before yeah, by nature, board. thousands yeah. of them by nature of those investments. And we got more to come. There's some exciting stuff coming out in hardware that we're going to share this holiday. And we're also invested in the next generation roadmap. And what we're really focused on there is delivering the largest technical leap you will have ever seen in a hardware generation, which makes it better for players and better for creators and the visions that they're building.
And then when we're talking about hardware, too, there's these other considerations that are really important to our community, probably to each one of ourselves as well. When we when you talk about library, because I want to dig in on that yeah. a little bit more, yeah. you know, as we talk about cloud in the wider entertainment industry, there's conversations about streaming. How is that impacting how I own my content that I've invested in? So what can we say about our stance around game preservation? Yeah, you know, one of the highlights for me of, of being in this position was getting to stand on stage when we announced the back compat yeah. coming to Xbox One. Like, it was fantastic. People were reading the teleprompter before I could read it. <laughs> I'm a slow reader. Um, and just feeling the energy in the, in the, uh, in the so like auditorium mm -hmm. as we were saying that and online. You know, one of the cues I think us as being part of Microsoft take is looking at Windows and how Windows over decades has maintained software compatibility with things that are built on it. Like I can still go back and play some of the games that I love playing on Windows from decades ago and it will still run. And we try to bring that same view to consoles. It's harder in console because the line between what the hardware is and what the game is in consoles mm -hmm. is traditionally, it's, it's tighter, which makes compatibility, you end up doing these generational compatibilities that we've built. But I will say compatibility, the ability to not only play the games, but my saves are still there with our cloud save systems yeah. to try to keep the services up as long as we can so that people can play is a tenant of what we are as Xbox. It's at our foundation. And when we look at future hardware generations and what we're gonna support, making sure that we respect, which is the word I use, respect the investments that people have made in Xbox going forward is fundamental. And the fact that you get entitlements when you buy a game from us on both Windows and Xbox mm -hmm. also means you have the ability to play that game um, across a multitude of devices, which I think furthers the compatibility of the games that you own. Mm -hmm. A visão deles, gente, é para Frentex a respeito do multi é, plataforma, mas realmente aí quando ele fala do Windows é uma visão aí da, da propriedade intelectual e que muito não tem a ver também com a própria restauração dos jogos. Mas o que, que você achou? Comenta aqui embaixo, diga, não esqueça de se inscrever no nosso canal, de deixar o seu like no vídeo e de se tornar membro no Drops de Jogos. Você tem um curso que você vai ganhar de produção de conteúdo se você for apoiador do nosso canal. Meus queridos, minhas queridas, muito obrigado pela presença de vocês. Vida longa e próspera, cuidem, cuidem dos seus e até mais. Tchau, tchau.